Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we've got a tutorial, a um, conglomeration tutorial <laughs> video for you. So if you've been following along on the channel um, this whole past week, I've been doing a t-shirt week and today is a um, all of the neckline tutorials that I have filmed. <laughs> you haven't seen these yet and I know that this is a very very long video. However, I'm going to leave a table of contents right here it's going to list which um, at what points in time along the video the different um, necklines pop up and then at the end of this video not only do I have the square neckline but I'm doing the entire wanted tee by Vanessa Pousset as a sew along because that uh, those instructions are in French and while the um, illustrations are very helpful and, and very informative and it's not a hard sew once you get the uh, neckline down I went ahead and just filmed an entire sew along so if you would like to have that to kind of hold your hand a little bit if you're nervous about the French instructions there you go it's a wonderful t-shirt. <laughs> I've really loved, um, really loved mine. So I'm going to keep this intro very short because again, there's a ton of information um, in this video, but I wanted this to be a resource for you to use time and time again as you're doing different necklines on different t-shirts. So we are covering a scoop neckline, a knit binding, a V neckline, a boat neckline, a Henley neckline, and a square neckline. I think I just named them all. They'll all be listed here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I hope that you have enjoyed this t-shirt week so far and if you have any questions on any of these tutorials feel free to ask me below and I will see you guys tomorrow for another daily vlog and then on Sunday I'll have a lookbook of all the t-shirts I've been working on so far this week and there's a lot. <laughs> so I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye! All right so it's time to do a um, scoop neck or crew neck or any kind of a round neckline on a shirt. So I have spoke about it in the daily vlogs but I want to put it here too. If you have a normal stretch fabric which most um, most cotton spandex fabrics, rayon spandex fabrics, um, my knit that I am using this is a cotton spandex has about 50% stretch and you can you can easily measure that by taking four inches and then seeing how far it'll stretch without being overly stretched you know, so it can still return back to normal. And typically with those, which are about 90% of your knits really, you want to sew, um, you want your neckband to be 85% of your neckline measurement. So you just want to measure your pattern. Um, don't necessarily go by the band that is in the pattern. You'll want to use your neckband piece for your width because that's what the pattern was drafted for. So you definitely want this for the width, but you can lengthen or shorten that rectangle depending on the stretch of your fabric. So again, for about anywhere from, I don't know, um, 30% to 100% you could uh, of stretch, you can use an 85% ratio. So you want your neckband to be 85% of your um, neckline. If you have stretchier fabric, like a lot of ITYs are really stretchy. Thinner, maybe thinner round spandexes might be really, really stretchy. If it can go above, um, easily above 100% without much work, you're going to want a smaller neckband. So maybe 80%. You might have to play around with it a little bit though. Try pinning it in um, and seeing. You want your neckband to be taut. You want to, definitely want to have to stretch it in order for it to lie flat against your body, and that's what's going to give you that beautiful neckline. Now, if you're using, um, for instance, a linen knit or a cotton um, knit that does not have spandex in it, that's just 100% cotton, so it's relying on the mechanical stretch, you're going to want to use probably 90%, so you're wanting a little bit longer strip. So that's just kind of my go-to numbers. You may need to play around with it a little bit, um, but that's just kind of a rough um, estimate for where you want to go from there. Okay, so that's how to determine the length. And the length of your neckband is going to ensure that, you know, if it's too short, you don't get the puckers when you're stretching it to fit. And if it's too big, it's not flopping out on you when you're wearing it. You want it to lie just nice and flush against your body. And those are some good um, rules to follow. All right, for inserting a scoop neckband. You want to have sewn your top at both shoulder seams. So my um, side seams are open, but my shoulder seams are done. So that's the back. <laughs> so I've got my, my neckline in there. You're going to, um, I always recommend when you're cutting out t-shirts, um, most of them are cut out on the fold, go ahead and make a notch where that fold is. It just makes it really easy to find your center front and center back. But once you have your center front and center back of your shirt, you're just gonna match those together and pull it taut and typically because the front is almost always lower than the back, 
not always, but typically, um, you should have a point somewhere along your front neckline. You can either clip into that, which is what I'm going to do, just teeny tiny, or you can place a pin. And what we're doing is we're quartering our neckline. And then we're going to do the same on the other side, match center front and center back. And mark that notch. Okay. Now for your neckband, you should go ahead and um, sew or serge it at, at the short ends so that it's a loop and then press it wrong sides together, like so. So that has been surged there and pressed wrong sides together. I also marked the center when I was cutting this out. So I'm just gonna match my seam with my center point there and just do the same thing. Pull it taut and I'm gonna cut a clip on this side, just a teeny tiny one. And do the same on the other side. So now we have quartered our neckband. So now what you're going to want to do is put four pins. You don't need any more than four. Sometimes I don't sew with any pins, but um, for this demonstration I will. So you're going to match your center back um, seam from your neckband to center back of your shirt. I like to do that because it's a really easy indicator if you're not putting tags in your clothes of where which is the back of the shirt and which is the front if just like from a quick when you're pulling it out of your drawer and throwing it on. So we'll put a pin there and then in the front, make sure you're not twisting your neckband, we're going to take center front and match it up to center front of the shirt and pin it. And then those quarter marks, we're just going to measure the, or uh, line those up and put pins there. So you should have four pins. And this is being sewn right side together. Although technically your neck band, it's right side, both sides, because you've folded it wrong sides together. But anyway. So then when you're looking at this, you should see, see the neck band is much shorter than where it needs to fill. So when we're sewing, we're going to stretch that neck, neck band to fit the shirt. So I like to sew and or serge. Again, I'm using my serger, but the same would apply if you're using your sewing machine. Just make sure you have it on a stretch stitch, which is a really narrow um, zigzag stitch. Um, a lot of times it looks like the lightning bolt on your sewing machine. But I'm just going to go, and as I sew very, very carefully, I'm going to have my shirt against the feed dogs, and I'm going to have my neckband on top. So that I'm going to pull it um, taut so that it, it fills that space as I'm sewing. I have 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance on this, um, so just mind the seam allowance on your pattern. Don't sew or serge over your, especially serge over your pins. All right, once it's all sewn in with my serger, I just like to feed, when I do anything in the round, I like to feed my tails back through what I just, I do serge over previous stitches, but just feed my tails back through that. The big darning needle. And then you're just going to go to your sewing machine and you're going to press this seam towards the shirt and you're done. And that should sit and lie just as perfect as punch. Now you could um, go back with your cover stitch. Here, let me turn this right side out. Your side seams are still unsewn at this point. But you could go back with your cover stitch and you could sew, you know, right below that seam line. Or sometimes I like to straddle my two cover stitch. One's on the neckband, one's on the seam line. Um, because a cover stitch will stretch really easily. I guess you could technically do that with a double needle as well. Although the double needle, twin needle, is not as stretchy as a cover stitch. So if you've got a higher neckline, be careful because it will pop stitches. Or you could just leave it as is and just give it a good press and everything should lie perfectly flat. So you'll see I've got a little bit of gathering right there. Once I've hit that with steam, that is going to lie just perfect because that will all 
lie the way it's supposed to. And there you go. That is as any kind of a round neckline. Okay, now I'm gonna show you guys how to do a neck binding. This is a little different than a neck band because you're actually wrapping, just like a bias binding finish, a bound finish, you're wrapping the knit around the um, top of the shirt. So to do this one, um, this also, this can be used on necklines and also um, arms, arms eye, um, if you're going sleeveless. If you wanna just bind your um, armhole for a sleeveless top, this works the same way. Except, well, I'll tell you where the except is. <laughs> So first things first, you wanna just sew one uh, shoulder seam together. So we have one long neck. <laughs> so we're going from unfinished shoulder seam to unfinished shoulder seam. And what we are going to do first, so this would be the same way if you're doing an armhole except your unfinished shoulder seam, it'd actually be side seam to side seam. So you would have the shoulder seam done and then you would have your, unop your opened side seam to side seam. That's the only difference. Okay, so first we're going to quarter this distance. We're gonna put our two shoulder seams together and pull it tight. And this probably won't be the other shoulder seam because typically the front is longer than the back. So keep that in mind. Okay, and we can clip this, this will be the center or you could put a pen if you don't want to clip into your seam allowance, that's fine. Then we're gonna take one raw edge and meet that new clip or pen that we just put in there. And it looks like for this one, it's right at my center uh, front or back, I can't tell which one this is it's off the top of my head, but that's already been clipped. But it might be different on this one. So you do the same for the other side. And that's pretty close, I'm gonna call that good. All right, so now we're going to do the same for our neckband. We're gonna mark the center, of which I always do when I'm, oh, didn't do it this time though, did I? I usually do that when I'm cutting it out. So we're gonna fold it in half and mark the center and then again, take each raw edge to that notch or pen and mark that center. It's just a matter of right sides together. We're going to start at one shoulder seam and just pop a pin in there. Your uh, binding will be smaller than your neckline, typically. Okay, now we are just going to, you need to look at the um, seam allowance on your pattern. This um, pattern has a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So at 3 8 of an inch, you can do this on a serger or a sewing machine. I'm gonna sew with the shirt down against the feed dogs and the binding up. And I'm going to stretch the binding to fit the shirt. And I'm just going from one quarter mark to the next quarter mark. So don't get too far ahead of yourself. Once your band is sewn, or your binding is sewn to your shirt, we're gonna go right sides together and put our shoulders together. And we want our seam allowances of our, um, the sewing that we just did to be pointing toward the band. So we want it pointing up toward the band because the band is actually gonna wrap around that seam allowance. 
So now we're going to sew this using our seam allowance, um, both the band and the shoulder seam in one fell swoop. Okay, and then our next step, you can go and press this seam allowance up if you'd like, because our next step is we're gonna go back with the cover stitch and we are going to wrap this binding around that serging and we're going to cover stitch, or you could use a twin needle if you wanted, but cover stitch this in place. So um, I will be back to show you what that looks like. All right, once our shirt is um, constructed, now to finish the binding, we have sw I've switched to my cover stitch function on my machine. I have a cover stitch um, serger combo here and it is switched back over to cover stitch now. However, you can do this with a zigzag stitch on your machine, um, with a twin needle on your sewing machine, um, or a cover stitch like I'm doing. But the basic idea now is you're just going to wrap this binding to the wrong side and then sewing from this front side, we're just gonna stitch this down all the way around. I'm gonna start in the back. I like to do, so I do two lines of stitching and I like to um, straddle the seam line. So I put one on the binding and one on the body of the shirt. But you can do it however you'd like. So we're just going to fold it to the wrong side as we sew. And we're just wrapping it around that serging that we did earlier. And then once you've got that all sewn down, you'll see there's a lot of excess here on the uh, wrong side. So then, these are my favorite scissors to use for the, this is called a pair of duckbill scissors, because one side obviously is real big, and it, you, they're applique scissors. Um, they're also, you can kind of see the handle. So it makes it really easy for just sliding along so that you're not accidentally cutting um, the shirt. And that big duck bill helps keep from piercing through uh, the underneath fabric. Just makes sliding along the seam really easy, but you still want to be careful. So I'm just going around and trimming, I mean, not super, super close, but fairly close to the stitch line. And I've got my hand underneath this just to make sure. I'm only cutting this binding strip and not the shirt. I have kind of feel like you're not a seamstress until you've accidentally cut a hole in something. <laughs> and there you have it. Nice and neat on the wrong side and nice and neat on the right side. And that's how you do a knit binding. Okay, today I'm gonna to show you how to do a boat neckline. And I am using the Pamela's Patterns uh, Perfect Tee. And um, this is what the template looks like for these. So these get laid on top of the front bodice and the back bodice pieces. So it kind of uh, extends past the um, original bodices, um, both back and front, and it tells you how to line it up there. So this is what your pattern piece looks like. This is the top of the um, back. <laughs> I put a little B in my seam allowances so I'd know. I have serged the top of the neckline and I've attached some of the double um, um, stick tape <laughs> um, up here to the top. It makes folding it over so much easier. You will notice on the pattern that it's got like a little dart here at the um, side, both at the front and the back. Um, you are gonna wanna draw that in with pen. I just mark the dot on the pattern and then I take a ruler and mark those in. They're just 5 eighths of an inch from either side. 
both on the front and the back. So you're going to have these little darts on either side and I have finished off the front and the back the same way. I have surged the top and then um, stuck my tape on there and then there's my little darts. So first things first, this is all done on the sewing machine number one. Um, I need to switch. Hold on. I need to switch my thread. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Making too many t-shirts. Okay, so you're going to match your front and your back up. Right sides together. And you're going to match up at either side these little um, darts, essentially. So I like to take my pen and stick it right through the point on one side and then through the point on the other oops and that way everything can line up nice and neat um, so you're gonna sew this not like a dart <laughs> you're gonna sew it like a triangle so you're going to start at one side, sew down, pivot, and then sew back up. And you're going to do this on both sides of your top. So I'm going to go do that really quickly. On my sewing machine, I'm going to use a straight stitch. Um, I'm using a three millimeter stitch and I do have a ballpoint needle in my machine. Once they're sewn, you've sewn down to your, um, on both sides. Sorry, thrust that in there, My, this overhead lighting is not good. Okay, now we're going to clip into our um, triangles to the point. And then you can go to your um, ironing board and press those little um, triangles open. And then they will lay down on top of one another. Like so. Let me see, hold on, this is getting unwieldy. Okay. <laughs> So again, we have clipped, we have clipped into our center. So you can either finger press or go press it um, this side open and this side open. And you're gonna line those up on top of one another. And then you should have a really nice finished shoulder seam. There's the facing on the inside and then there's the outside. So we need to do that on both sides and then we can peel off our tape and press down um, the facing all the way around. So it kind of will look like that just like a slit, but it finishes it off really nice there at the shoulder. So I'm just gonna go over to the press to the um, ironing board and I'm gonna peel up my tape and very carefully press that under right where it wants to crease all the way across. And that's also gonna keep my little um, darts or triangles that I sewed, keep that nice and flat. Um, the end of that should be somewhat flush with the top of your shoulder like that um, and we will pin that together so that when you sew your sleeve in that's all cleanly finished. Okay so I'm gonna go um, press that really quick and then I'll be right back and we'll do the last step. Alright so when everything is pressed and again that double stick tape is just wonderful. I even stuck a little tag in here that says this is the back because boat necks are very hard to determine <laughs> what's the front and the back. Um, but there is my shoulder seam and I haven't sewn anything down yet it's all just basically glued with that double stick tape. And there's the front. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the machine 
and I am going to on the right side and we just have we're just working on the um, neckline right now nothing else is assembled on the right side I can kind of feel where that um, surging line is and I'm just going to top stitch from one shoulder or one um, arm's eye all the way over to the other arm's eye on both the front and the back this does not have to be a cover stitch it can be a regular stitch because um, you've got a big enough opening here for your head that it doesn't need to really stretch um, so that's all I'm just using a regular stitch on my sewing machine three millimeters just a little bit longer than normal um, but I'm just going to top stitch on the front and the back right over that um, surging line that I can kind of feel from the right right hand side okay so when all of that is top stitched down it looks like this and there you have it that is a boat a beautiful boat neckline um, now you can put in the sleeves and sew up the side seams and do the hem and stuff per normal so there you have it okay I'm filming the last uh, neckline tutorial this isn't the last one you're seeing on this video but this is the last one I'm filming <laughs> okay so we're doing the Henley today um, this can be used for just a straight Henley t-shirt, which is what I'm doing today, or if you wanted to attach a collar stand with a collar um, for like a golf shirt or a polo type shirt, it would be the same um, application. You would just be attaching a collar, collar stand instead of just a neckband um, at that stage. So what you're going to need is you're going to need your neckband piece or collar and collar stand, um, whatever, and I've got mine pressed wrong sides together, so it's one long strip. I have my center marked because that's going to match center back. Um, my front and my back are attached at the shoulders, right sides together, as you can see here. And then on the front, I have marked, um, and your pattern should be marked appropriately. Let me show you. It should have markings um, like this one, and it shows you where you should stop stitching, which is right there, and then the seam line. So um, it wants a seam all the way around um, that line at 3 eighths of an inch. So I went ahead and marked that. You're also going to have two placket pieces that should be, um, they're just rectangles, but they should be interfaced. This piece here. So what we've done, I've attached it to the shoulders and then I've gone, and if you can hopefully see, I have marked with a pen, um, an erasable pen, my center line that I'm going to eventually cut. And then I've gone and stay stitched 3 eighths of an inch on, you know, around in a box. So it's 3 eighths of an inch around all three sides around that line. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut on that line. Um, so in between my stay stitching, I'm going to cut down to the point and then I'm going to stop. Doot. Then I'm going to stop and I'm going to cut into each corner. So you're kind of cutting, don't cut through your stay stitching, just to it. You're cutting kind of a Y shape. Okay, so it's kind of looks like that. And there's our little triangle there at the bottom, if you can see that. All right, so our next step is that we're going to be attaching this neck band. So right sides together. You can sew this on or use a serger. I'm gonna be using a serger. We're gonna match our raw, raw edges and the short end is going to um, be in line with the front part of the shirt, the cut part we just did, and you can put a pin there. Our neckband's gonna be smaller than our neckline though, so you're gonna have to stretch it. And then I've marked center back with a little notch. And I've also mar marked the center of this neckband, so those will match up. And then again, you're gonna match the raw edge of the band to the um, other raw edge that you cut. Okay. And once we've done that, I'm gonna to go to the serger 
and I am going to sew that neckband down at 3 8 of an inch. So there's 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on this pattern. Make sure you check that. So I'm just going to sew all the way around um, from the front neck opening where they cut that slit all the way around to the next one. 3 8 of an inch. If you're surging, make sure you remove your pins. You do not want to hit one of those with your blade. <laughs> okay, once your neckband is on, you just want to go and press your seam allowance for your neckband down towards the body of the shirt so that the neckband gets pressed up. So go ahead and press that and then you can go to a sewing machine and just with, with a regular straight stitch like a 3.0 millimeter um, you can top stitch that down because this doesn't need to stretch because you've got the placket that's here um, so it can easily go over your head without having to need without needing to stretch. Um, so yeah, so go ahead and press that and then you can top stitch that down. So I'm going to go do that really quickly. All right, so once you have your neck band, this is getting a little crazy here. <laughs> All pressed and top stitched down. Now we're going to take a look at our plackets. So I'm really quickly just gonna go and finish off um, one long edge off of each um, side. And it, this is just a rectangle, so it doesn't really matter which one. Okay, now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I am going to just press a memory crease in here. I'm going to press these in half, but I'm going to, not really in half, I'm going to press and just match up my, um, edge, the raw edge of the placket up to where my surging line starts, if that makes sense. So I'm going to press it like this, wrong sides together, but I want to just press this up to where my surging line, because the surging line is going to cover the stitch line eventually. I'm going to do that on both pieces. I'm going to go really quickly and do that um, just so we can have a memory crease. Okay, now you'll notice on your pattern piece, you've got these dots, and they are 3 eighths of an inch down and in from the sides on all four corners. So you should have those marked on your piece. And basically this top corner, this top dot that's up here in the top corner, we're going to line that up right sides together with the top of the shirt. So uh, the top of the neckband. So basically your neckband will be flush with the cut raw edge, but it's going to be above your, your um, not your neckband, your placket will be above your neckband by 3 eighths of an inch, but it will be flush with the cut edge of this placket. And again, you should be right sides together. And then you're going to sew down to the bottom, which should be right where your stay stitching line ends. So while technically when you have something interfaced, it should be right side up on the machine um, when you're sewing and then the other piece should be against the feed dogs. I want to see, I really want to see where this stay stitch line is and so I'm actually going to sew with my shirt up and I'm going to follow that stay stitch line and sew all the way um, from dot to dot basically on that placket piece. So it's from where I've clipped into the seam or the stay stitching down here at the bottom all the way to the top of the uh, neckband, basically, at 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to actually turn you and I'm going to we'll be working on the sewing machine. Get to 
see the lights. <laughs> lights, camera, action. So again, I have the shirt side up right now just so I can see that previous um, stay stitching line. I want to sew right on that. Okay. So now, once that is done, you want to go, oh, stay in the frame. <laughs> you want to go to the machine. So we've sewn this right sides together. So now we're going to open this out and we want to, to press our seam allowance towards the placket because you guessed it, that's gonna get wrapped like so and then top stitch down. Eventually. <laughs> okay, so first things first. First things first, let's go and press this seam we just sewed sewed to the placket. I'm gonna go do that real quick. All right, and now we are going to finish off our top. So now we've got the front of our shirt here and there's our placket. You can kind of see the, the pressed crease that's in there. But right now we are going to fold it back on itself, right sides together. And I want to fold this over to where my, so we've, you know, we've pressed this towards the placket and I want this side, because we're going right sides together here, my surged line to go past so that this folded edge here is lined up with that surging. And we're just going to stitch right across the top of that neckband. So it's going to look like that. So you can see the surged edge is going to extend a little bit because when we clip, cut that seam down and this gets turned to the wrong side, that will be nice and flush with our neck band there. But then on this side, <clears throat> when that folds back into that natural um, fold line that we created, that surging will cover the previous stitch, stitch line there. So it keeps everything nice and neat on the inside and on the out. And then I think we're going to top stitch. Yes. So I'm just going to press this again, and it should have already been pressed, but just to make sure that the surge line covers that sewn line. And then we'll come back and we're going to um, edge stitch this side of the placket. All right, once we've pressed that nice and neat, we are going to edge, edge stitch onto the placket just um, next to that seam line. And we're just leaving the little triangle here at the bottom and this whole, you know, edge here that's unsewn. We're leaving that alone for right now. So we're gonna really quickly edge stitch. All right, now we're going to do the same to the other side. So we're going to line up our, going to unfold our placket here and line it up with the left hand side. We just did the right. And again, that top should be extending past the neckband by three eighths of an inch. All right, and so I will stitch again <laughs> from with the shirt side up so I can follow that stay stitch line. 
Okay, now I'm just gonna go press that towards the placket. This merino wool I'm using makes pressing really easy. All right, and then we're going to fold it back on itself, right sides together. And again, I'm just gonna make sure that when I do that, that my surging line extends past that folded edge. because so we want that to cover our previous stitching. I'm just gonna sew right across the top of that. And now I want my serge line again to just cover that stitching line where we connected it and I'm going to go press that and then we will edge stitch that just down to where we stopped sewing at the bottom. All right, now I'm going to move you so that you can look down here. Now I'm going to turn my shirt wrong side out. That's right side out. <laughs> hey. Now nah, we're wrong side out. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Wrong side out. And so we want our right side, well, it doesn't really matter, but traditionally you want your right side on the bottom. Right side is worn on the bottom. And then your left side right underneath it. Okay. Let me push that out of the way. There we go. Okay. So now we have this little triangle, hopefully you can see that's the bottom part of this placket. Okay, so you wanna make sure you stop before you get to the bottom there, cause that is important. All right, so you should have a little triangle here at the bottom from where we cut, did that Y cut. So what we want lining all this up nice and neat here. What we want <clears throat> is we want our right placket, oh, stay in frame. We want our right placket down. Well, actually, we want our little um, triangle pulled towards the wrong side. Then we want our right placket stacked on top of that, and then our left placket stacked on top of that so that when we lift everything up, we have a nice little sandwich like that. Okay? And then we are going to sew right across that stay stitching across that little triangle. Do that really quickly. Okay, so again, when you've got wrong side up, you want to pull that little bitty triangle through to the back, then stack your right placket and then your left placket on top of that. And then you pinch them all together here, because you don't want to sew through the shirt yet. And then you sew right along that stitch line, uh, that seam, um, stay stitching that you did from corner to corner, cut corner to cut corner. Now I'm going to really quickly go and serge off the bottom here. All right, but we still want, you know, a little bit of this that's gonna kind of be flapping in the area, uh, or the air. Um, I, we're gonna go now and press the right side. Okay. 
So now we want to go and give the right side here, um, this is the top of the shirt, a really good press. And then we're going to sew down the little um, flap that's here on the inside of the shirt. So you just want to sew a box around, you can kind of feel that bulk, sew the box with the X through it, right there um, through that bottom piece. And that's going to really secure this whole area right down here. So I'm just going to go give this a good press and then I'm going to um, sew my box. Alright, so then our finished little box there on the front. Can you see that? Come on, white balance. It's these darn overhead lights really throw off my light over here. There is the, um, hopefully you can see that, the finished. And then the last step you need to do once your Henley is all done or your polo shirt or whatever is just attach your um, buttonholes and then buttons or snaps. Now. I prefer snaps on knits. I think that knit buttonholes are a pain in the rear end, but if you've got, I mean this is interfaced, if you've got stable enough fabric and you don't mind the knit buttonholes, um, then by all means go right ahead. Most machines do have a knit buttonhole um, setting that's a little different from a regular buttonhole, so make sure you check your machine for that. But yeah, your neckline is all finished other than the snaps and or buttons. And that's how you do a Henley neckline. All right. So today we're going to do a V neckline. Um, so we're going to use the sewing machine for part of it and then we will finish off um, at the serger. Okay, so things you want to have done first off. You should have your front and your back uh, joined at the, sol the shoulders, not the soldiers, the shoulders, <laughs> with your seam allowances pressed towards the back. And then I've attached some uh, fusible woven stay tape right there in the V. And I've gone ahead and marked in my 3 8 inch seam allowance. On this shirt, there is a 3 8 inch seam allowance um, or one centimeter seam allowance. Um, and I've marked that in with pen. Now your um, band looks like this. It actually should be one piece. I used a um, thrifted shirt, so I've had to cut mine in two. So I will be attaching those here in just a second. Um, but your band looks like this and kind of has these weird uh, V's here at the end. But what we're going to do first is we are going to sew one centimeter, because that's the seam allowance for this pattern, down to the point and then pivot and then go back up to the other side, okay? So I'm going to do that really quick. On the sewing machine, I'm using a three millimeter length. Um, and just a regular straight stitch. Alright, once that has been sewn, you see that? Once that's been sewn, we're going to take our scissors and we're going to clip from this point down to our stitch line um, without going through the stitching. Two, but not through. Now I'm going to go to the um, ironing board and I'm going to press these little two little seam allowances open and then we're going to press the band wrong sides together all the way around the circle. All right, so I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back and show you what that looks like. All right, now once you have pressed it wrong sides together, you're going to have, these are the seam allowances from those little um, doodads that we sewed together. So you can just trim those off. It makes things much easier so that you have a beautiful mitered corner there. Okay. Now what we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to sew this neckline on the sewing machine and then we will go to the serger and um, finish it off. So um, typically with the necklines you don't need a lot of stretch to get them over your head because they you know they give you more room here um, which is kind of what we're banking on. You could sew the whole thing on the serger or use a zigzag stitch if you want. This is just my preferred method. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a pin and I'm gonna put it through both seam lines there right at about where that three, you could mark this on here too, but right about where that three eighths of an inch um, or one centimeter point would be on the um, band. And then I'm just going to stick it through where I've marked on my stay tape. 
like so. So my pen is coming out right there. And then we are going to line this up just one side. And you just want your band to be flush with that cut edge. So when this is all said and done, you'll notice that your shirt, this is the other side of the V here, and then your neckline is going pretty much the opposite direction, and that's what you want at this point. Oops. Pulled out my pen accidentally. All right, so once you have that, oh my gosh. <laughs> mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> All right, once you've got that, met, um, line up your center back neck of both your band and your shirt. I have a seam line there because I couldn't cut mine in one continuous loop. Okay, so we're just going to do one side. So your band should be shorter than your neckline. Um, and I'm just going to sew from the point all the way up to the center back neck and then I'm going to just back stitch. So we're just doing half the neck right now. I'm going to sew with my um, shirt against the feed dogs and my neck band up so that I can stretch it. So when you're putting all of this under the sewing machine, you basically want to get everything to where um, lying flat so that your v-neck and your v-neck is going at a right angle this way to the right and then your band is at a right angle to the left the unsewn parts and that's how you know you've got it right and then you just want to sink your um, needle right into that seam line And now there's two ways you can do this. You can just sew, I don't know, a couple of inches up and then finish it off on the serger all the way around, or you can go ahead and sew on the sewing machine the whole neckband. I'm just going to go ahead and sew, sew the whole thing on the sewing machine, and then I will serge it, um, just because I know that, that um, it's big enough to go over my head without having to stretch a lot. Okay, now, once we have half of that sewn... You should have your stitch line um, right here. And mine did not hit my point, but that's fine. I just want it to my miter. Being in the center of your miter is the most important part. <laughs> so now I'm going to cut just the shirt. And I'm going to cut from the bottom point to the end of the line of stitching. Just through the shirt, not through the band. So now I have cut right there, hurt my face, there we go. So cut to that line of stitching. So now we can take the band and it can turn that corner. Like so. But now we're going to sew That little clip that you did should match up right in the center of where you've done um, that seam of that miter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew um, starting at the seam of the miter and very carefully making sure that I don't have any pinches. And I'm just going to sew a couple of inches with the band on the bottom and the um, shirt up because I want to be able to make sure that I'm starting where I stopped right there at that point, and then sewing just a couple of inches um, so that I don't get anything pinched. And then we will flip it back over and have the neck band so we can stretch it appropriately. So with the shirt up and the band down, I'm just gonna put my needle right where I stopped sewing.
I'm just going to do a couple of inches. All right, and the, my stitching meets there, and I don't have any pinches. So if we go to the right side, it looks like that, which is just what we want. All right, but we got to finish off this neck band. So now we still have a section that needs to be sewn. So I'm just going to start at center back, and I'm going to work my way um, to where I stopped the sewing um, here and just pull my um, neckband to fit as I go. All right, and now the whole thing should be attached. So I'm gonna switch you over to the serger and show you how I'm gonna finish that off. Okay, so now to finish it off with the serger, I'm going to serge with my shirt up and my band against the feed dogs and I'm gonna start right at the point here of this V. And I'm just shaving off just a little bit as I go. But I'm going to start at the V, I'm going to go all the way around, and I'm going to end at the V. Now when I end at the V, I'm going to chop off um, with my blade uh, the tail, my starting tail, but I'm going to leave the tail of the ending long and thread that tail through, back through what I just surged. And there we have a beautiful, there's the wrong side of this neckband. So now you can just go press and you can either top stitch it on the right hand side if you'd like, or uh, cover stitch it if you like. Um, you don't need to cover stitch it. You could just do a regular um, longer straight stitch and that would be fine. Um, unless you just have a really tight v-neck, which I guess exists somewhere. Um, <laughs> but if you've got the um, stretch, if you don't need the stretch, then um, yeah, either way. But yeah, look at the finished. How nice, no puckers. And that is the uh, way I do all of my v-necks. Okay. Okay. So now, sorry. <laughs> now I'm going to show you guys how to do a square neckline. And I'm actually just going to make this an entire wanted t shirt um, sew along. Really, the only thing that's hard about the wanted t is the square neckline. So if, um, but the whole pattern's in French. So um, you could buy the pattern and then just follow along with this. So this is going to be a little bit more than just the square neckline. Um, I'm also going to do just a full sew along, kind of. All right. So prep for your pattern. Here's what you should have. You should have one back and I have, um, you cut it on the fold, one back and I have put my um, woven stay tape, um, fused that to the back shoulder seams and I've also fused my um, double sided uh, hem tape to the bottom. Then you'll have one front cut on the fold. It also has the double sided hem tape on the bottom and then along the square neckline I have fused um, woven stay tape in the corners about oh an inch and a half either way so this is this is important this is really going to help you get nice crisp corners so you want to put the woven um, stay tape there in the corners and then you should have two sleeves and you can cut any of the links that are available and I've gone ahead and put my um, double-sided tape this is kind of a curved hem so I've just done two pieces of my double stick tape for the hem that makes it much easier and I've done the four uh, three-quarter length sleeve so you'll have two sleeves and then you will have um, one of these little guys. You cut this on the fold. So it's this. This is the front part of the band. And I make notches in the center where I, I think I should have. thought I did. <laughs> I should have notches in the center. Because um, that's going to make lining it up. So this was cut on the fold. So I'm going to notch my center. I should have done that when I cut it out, but I clearly didn't. So you want one of these on the fold, and then you want one of the longer ones, which is this piece here. You want one of these on the fold, and this goes around the back part of the neck. I did cut that one. 
um, and likewise cut your center there. That's going to help when we're installing. Okay, so that's kind of the lay of the land. That's um, all the pieces that you're going you're gonna to want. So first things first, this is how I do all of my t-shirts. And to be honest, I haven't even looked at the instructions of the wanted tee. This is all my own doing. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to go to the serger and I'm just going to serge both of my um, shoulder seams, my front and back shoulder seams, right sides together. And I'm going to do that really quickly. Um, the seam allowances on this pattern are one centimeter or three eighths of an inch and the hems are two centimeters or around about three quarters of an inch just for reference, although I'm doing one inch hems because I can and because my hem tape is one inches wide. <laughs> I like to live on the edge. Okay, so I've got my shoulder seam sewn at three eighths of an inch. I'm using gray serger thread, but in my far left needle I have the red so that if this seam gets um, stressed, you can't see the gray, it's just the red. Um, okay, I'm gonna go to my pressing mat and or my ironing board, pressing board, whatever, and press my shoulder seams to the back. And then I'm going to take a fuse, a um, erasable pen, any kind of mark, and I'm actually going to draw in my 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance on my tape on both sides. That's going to help when we put this neckband in next. So I'm going to go do those two things and I'll be right back. Okay, so it should look like this. So I have my 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance drawn in on both those corners. Okay, now, unlike most necklines, actually this one and the next one, which is a V-neck line, we actually do quite a bit on the sewing machine. So that's why I've got you positioned here to the sewing machine, and then I'll switch you to the serger when we go back to that, um, to that machine. Okay, so we've got our short piece here, and we've got our long piece here with our funny little... Um, kind of flag ends. Okay, so we're just going to sew these in a big loop, basically. Right sides together, one centimeter or three eighths of an inch, and we're gonna sew down to the point, pivot, and back up. And we're gonna do that on both ends. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. Okay, so we've sewn them both, these little V's, on both ends. So now, we're just going to clip right in here to the stitching, but not through the stitching. Kind of see that. Both sides. Okay, now I'm just going to go over to the ironing board and I'm going to press these two separate seam allowances opened on each end. So I will press that side open and that side open and then I'll do the same right here. So I'm going to do that real quick um, and then we're going to press it right or wrong sides together. But let me press those first and then I'll come back and show you what we're doing. Okay, once you've pressed those open nicely like this, we're just going to lay them on top of each other. So we're just going to put this whole band and match up your notches um, wrong sides together. And you're going to have, it's going to be very messy here at the corners. That's okay, we'll come back and clean that up before we attach it. But just put this real nice and neat wrong sides together and give it a good press. And if you're using cotton jersey like I am, the nice thing about that is that it presses and holds a crease just like regular cotton does really well. So I'm just gonna go back to the ironing board and I'm gonna press wrong sides together my band all the way around. Okay, when you have everything all nice and pressed, 
you can go back with your scissors and cut these little dog ears off. So we just want it flush with the outside. It'll make these next steps much easier when you're having to really line things up. Okay, so there we go. Nice clean corners. Okay, now we are actually going to attach this to our neck with a sewing machine. Um, I have my sewing machine set at a three millimeter stitch length. It is a straight stitch. Uh, this is a nice big neckline. It's really easy to get over your head, so you don't have to worry about this stretching too much. But if you are worried about pop stitches, we are going to serge it at the end, um, which makes a really nice clean finish, but also will help ensure if you do pop a stitch, you've got, I mean, the serging stitch is, is what we use most of the time anyway, so you have that safety net. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We are going to sew in two separate passes. We are first going to sew from the corner all the way around the back part of the shirt to this other corner. So that is step one. So we're not going to overwhelm ourselves. And how we do that is we are going to place right sides together and you just want to um, obviously this shorter piece goes in the front so we are lining this mitered corner up and we're lining it the straight edge to line up with the straight edge here of the edge of the top but how far down we scoot it here, all depends. Got a really easy way to do this. So we're gonna take a pen and we're gonna put it through the seam of that miter and push it through to the other side until we hit that sewn or that drawn on um, point. Okay, so I've taken a pen and I've gone through both seam allowances of that mitered corner and then I've poked it through the point there right where we want it. And that should keep everything nice and secure. And spot, okay. So then you just, so once that has been pinned, so we have our miter right at that point. So there's one side, that miter, I've gone right through the seam of that mitered corner. And then on this back side, it's gone right through the point where I've marked. Okay. So now we're just going to, remember we're just going around the back neck. So the only thing I'm going to match is I'm going to match the um, center back of the seam where I clipped into it to center back at the back of the shirt. And then I'm going to come back and do the same pinning treatment to the other corner. And remember, we're not doing the whole neck neckline in one fell swoop. We're only we're doing it in two passes. So again, I'm taking a pen and I'm going through one seam and the second seam of that miter to keep everything nice and stacked on top of one another. And then I'm going to poke it through that point I drew.
and just make sure that we've got those, you know, the, um, sorry, the band and the shirt are all lined up. This is all around the long edge. Okay. So it's going to look really front funny here at the front, and we don't care about that right now. So what I'm going to do, and I want to sew with my band on top. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to lower my needle right there where that pen is coming out. And I want to make sure that this is all nice and straight and flat together. So I've got two layers of my band and then the one layer of my shirt. And I'm going to start sewing right at that point. Make sure everything's smooth underneath. If you need to kind of... Mess around with your pens just a little. Oopsie. You don't want to pull it out. <laughs> You want to just kind of make that all nice and flat. Okay. Hopefully this is making sense. This is a little more difficult than the v-neck. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to start right at that seam line and I'm going to sew with my neckband up for this section with my neckband up and my shirt against the um, feed dogs. And I'm going to stretch my neckband as I sew so that it fits into um, the neckline because the neckband is shorter, just like normal, is shorter than the um, actual neckline. So we'll have to stretch the neckband to fit. But I'm just lowering it right down the needle, right where that point is. Another thing, when you're putting this under the um, feed dog, make sure that the front of your neckline, the little short piece that we're not messing with right now, is coming to a, at a right degree angle out. That way, everything should be lying flat. Now, your band will be going the opposite way, and that's what you want. The um, short part of your band that we're not messing with right now will be shooting off in a, a right angle the opposite way, and that's what you want at this point. Sometimes jersey can be curly, so just go slow. Okay, and as you come to that second miter, again, lay everything out where your shirt will be coming to a right angle to your right and your band is basically going to a right angle to your left. But that's what you want at this point and we're going to sew right to that miter and stop right on that seam line of that mitered corner. Okay. So this is what it looks like right now. So we've got our, our band sewn on, obviously. That will get pressed up eventually. Ouch. <laughs> and then our band is basically wanting to twist and turn and go all sorts of ways. So now what we're going to do, there we go. And I'm off that a little bit. Most What's most important is that you end right on that miter. So now we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut just through the bodice. This is why this um, woven stay ta tape is so great. So we're just through the bodice, not through your band. We're going to cut diagonally through that corner and we're going to go right to that s where you ended that stitching line. 
on both sides. Okay, so here's the front of our shirt. Sorry, it's getting gathered in by that band. And we have clipped only through the front of the shirt to where our stitching stopped on both sides. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> flipping around, okay? So now, we're gonna turn the corner. So the, the short end of our band now, we're gonna match to the front of the shirt, right sides together. And I think it's easiest to match those center notches that you cut um, first, because we are gonna have to stretch this front little piece just like we did the rest. It's gonna be shorter than the front, because that's how you get a nice laying neckband. And actually that's the only spot I'm gonna put a pin, is just right there in the center. So for this one, we're gonna sew with our neck band against the feed dogs because we want to be able to see and we want to start sewing again. So here's where we've ended the sewing, right there. We're gonna kind of manipulate this excess out of the way and we're gonna start sewing right there and then sew the front all the way to the next side. But we're gonna sew with the shirt up so that we can be careful not to catch any pinches and make sure that we, um, we hook up to where we stopped off. You should have stopped right at your miter seam. So we're, we're, that's what we're heading towards, okay? So I'm gonna go sew that next. And again, the band is on the bottom this time. Okay, and it should be all puckery like that because we stretched that to fit and that's what we want. So now, when we look at the front, Look how nice that miter goes right into that corner. Okay, this one's a little off. So clearly I got off somewhere there. <laughs> is it worth redoing? No. <laughs> that is exactly what you want though. Okay, so now I'm going to turn you, we're done with the sewing machine. Now we're gonna go back to the serger and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish off the neckband and then sew the rest of the shirt. Okay, so here we are at the serger. So now, still with the neckband, we're gonna sew starting at the corner and we're just gonna kinda push. Um, it doesn't really matter if you have the neckband up or, well actually, it may be easier to have your shirt up that way you aren't accidentally um, catching something you don't want to. But we're gonna start at one um, of the long sides. And we're just gonna start at the corner and we're gonna go all the way around to the other corner in one pass. And you can not cut off or cut off as much as you want. It's up to you. Okay, and then cut your threads right at the edge. Because now, we're gonna go across that front part and leave nice long tails on either end. So this is the front short part that goes across. And we leave nice long tails on either end here because we can weave them back into that line of stitching and it finishes that corner off really nicely. So there's the inside, and see that just finishes that off really nicely. So now we can go to the um, ironing board and we want to iron um, or press these seam allowances down. And then at that point, 
You can go back and top stitch them down if you'd like with either a cover stitch or I actually have just been using my sewing machine with a straight stitch because um, this neckline doesn't need to stretch to go over your head. So I'm just going to go press this real quick and then we'll finish sewing our shirt. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've top, sorry about this lighting, top stitched um, around, I basically top stitched my um, seam down. It looks very puckery right now. That's just because this is a cotton spandex and it needs a really good steam. And I'll do that at the very end. Um, but yeah, I just did that with my sewing machine. I put a little tag in there, perfectly imperfect. Okay, so we're just gonna finish sewing this together because um, again, the instructions are in French. So um, just wanna be as helpful as possible. So next step is we are going to sew in the sleeves flat. This is how I do all my t-shirts. I do the shoulder seams, the neck, the neckline finishing, whatever that is, and then um, the sleeves in flat is next. So I'm just gonna sew those in real quick. Okay, once our sleeves are sewn in flat, here is our shirt inside out. And we've got our sleeves on, but open side seams. Um, also, I sew with my sleeve against the feed dogs. My shirt side up and the actual sleeve is against the feed dogs. That helps ease in that um, excess that's there at the sleeve cap. Okay, so then the next step is just to sew your side seam. And again, this can all be done on a sewing machine. It doesn't have to be done on a serger. Just use a stretch stitch, your lightning bolt stitch. Okay, I'm gonna sew from the bottom of the shirt up to the bottom of the sleeve. Okay, you basically have a t-shirt now. So now you can go to your ironing board, press your seam allowances towards the back, take off your tape, fold up your hems, and press those down. So I'm gonna go do that real quick and I'll be right back. All right, and there we have it, our finish, finished <laughs> wanted tee. So now all you need to do is go back and hem what you've glued down basically um, hem your sleeves and the bottom of your shirt with either a cover stitch machine or a twin needle. <coughs> Something that's got some stretch. And there you have it. Your very own wanted tee. All right. Hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed all these necklines. And as always, leave me any questions you have down below. See you guys next time.